me. I see that he's on here, but uh, who's that, Trevin? Yeah, Trevin Webb. If any of you uh, move to uh, Oregon and you need insurance, that's the guy. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Well, welcome everybody to our uh, first group of LinkedIn mastery calls. Um, is uh, just out of curiosity, is there anything that any wants to accomplish on this call or, or questions that they may have about any anything? Do you, no. the, um, in, future, in future meetings, should we be in front of our computer or can we do this all over the phone? You could do it over the phone, but it, it, it will help to be in front of the computer. And we'll, we'll, we're recording this, so this will be on the website uh, because we do, uh, we do some show and tell during things. So, uh, so that way, if, if, uh, if we do show something, I'll show it on screen. You can go back later during the replay and you can watch it. Yeah, you'll definitely get the most out of it if you're on your computer um, because we're going to do screen shares, things like that, and do uh, live demos. So. Trevin okay, is back. Great. Trevin, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you, you can. Trevin, is that you? No, that was right. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Trevin, Trevin's there, but uh, he... He's well, there. hopefully he can hear us. Hopefully he can hear us. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, okay, so, so to begin with, uh, uh, so nobody has any questions uh, about anything. I'd like to know, uh, have, have, has everyone gone through their LinkedIn profile and updated it uh, and taken a look at it? Yes. Okay. Great, great. Uh, any questions there about any of, of those things? No, no. nothing? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to start off by, uh, I, I have uh, actually, Missy, I'm going to pick on you. I have um, uh, your, uh, your LinkedIn profile <laughs> in front of me. Um, and, okay. uh, and I'm going to go ahead and share the screen here so we can... Uh, take a look at it and uh, we can kind of go over like a couple of points here. Uh, Misty, for, for those of you who don't know, Misty Barnes is very talented uh, in a lot of different areas and um, uh, uh, pivoting in, in your, you have a business right now, but uh, also are looking to uh, get, a, get a job and, and expand your niche that way. Am I, am I right about that? Uh-huh, exactly. Okay. okay, so what I'm looking at right now, first of all, is I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile uh, page. And in the background, uh, there is uh, just the standard LinkedIn uh, uh, like stock image with no background on it. Now, uh, within one of the modules that we uh, have within our, the course here, we talk about how you can upgrade your background and how you can use it as a billboard to kind of satisfy a uh, like a uh, an image uh, that that will allow you to to kind of be more seen. It's like a giant billboard back here. Andres, so for, yeah. Since we're, on, since we're on the group call here, why don't you do? Why don't you show them Canva real fast? So why don't you go into Canva.com and actually show them how this is done? That's so a, you, that's a great idea. idea. So. Just to give you an idea of what we're going to do here. So here's my, uh, my background. As you can see, I've got the Netherlands here. This is uh, a few blocks from my house. And this is Los Angeles. It's showing that I'm doing business in both areas. So if somebody lands here, they can see right away that, you know, I, I have two different cities. It, it explains a little bit. It talks a little bit about my story. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys uh, a website called Canva. Canva.com. This is a free service. They, they have a, a freemium version, if you will, and a premium version. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see. Um, you can put in my... <laughs> What's that? You can sign in as me. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Actually, I'm going to sign up with my Google account just to make things very simple. And uh, I think I have to actually cut something off here. Okay, there we go. All right. So Canva is a is a is a basically a free service. You can pay for certain components of it, but for the majority of what you're going to need, it is free. And what Canva does is it's a it basically makes content 
like it doesn't make content for you, but it helps you with making content. And if you go over here, and let's say that we're gonna do a new Canva. And over here it says, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit uh, in the image. And it says, uh, create a design right here. Uh, over here, you can see the different templates they already have. So we have some media, Facebook post, a LinkedIn banner, that's what we're gonna want. Uh, blog title, Instagram post, but I'm gonna go to here to LinkedIn, uh, a LinkedIn banner. Now the thing with uh, uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and all of these is that they have their own size dynamics, basically uh, what, what they require for you to create a, uh, uh, a banner for them. So if you want to create like a banner like this or something similar, you have to make sure that it's sized in the exact way that they uh, require of you. So this is already sized, so you don't have to worry about any of that. And then over here, you'll notice that they have these templates kind of already done. And the top one, it says free. The, this one says free. And this one, there's a little dollar sign that pops up. And that's because if I wanted to use this piece of art, then I would have to pay money for it or get the, uh, uh, the upgraded version of it. 99 cents. So, 99 cents, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but what we're going to do is, is we're going to just uh, probably use like something like this, right? And uh, I can change out the background image. So if I go to my uploads, uh, I have pictures that I've already uploaded here. So uh, like here's a picture of Los Angeles if you just wanted to do that. And uh, then you can start changing things around and, uh, you know, put in like, you know, your, your name here. Uh, I'm just gonna put new background and so on and so forth. And uh, the, the, the reason why you want to do this specifically, maybe I can scroll back on correctly, um, is because again, you know, part of LinkedIn is the first impression. So if somebody shows up on your, on your LinkedIn profile for whatever reason, this is going to catch their eye. And so you want to make sure that this helps tell part of your story. Now, a few words of advice about this is that, you know, you don't want to put text down here because your picture is going to be on the bottom third of the picture in the middle. You also want to make sure not to go end to end because if you do that, then if someone's on mobile, it may get cut off. So try and keep it a little bit towards this area right here. And when you're ready to change it, you hit this pencil icon. I think it's this pencil icon. That's a good, good quick point, Andres, is, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is free size for desktop, and it works for mobile, um, but I, what I would recommend doing is that you, you, you size your photo, you check it, it'll, it should look great on a desktop right away, and then check it against mobile, and kind of, a, if the text gets cut off a little bit, move it towards the center, shrink the text a little bit. Um, if you just kind of check it, like, I, I would just say kind of like almost like a guess kind of... Uh, technology, you'll get it to look great on mobile and desktop. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, Trevin Webb uh, can't, uh, can't hear me right now, and, uh, uh, but maybe I could spell his name correct, correctly. There we go. And uh, same thing here, Trevin. I mean, you are, uh, you are an award-winning uh, insurance agent, so you, know, you may want to put even a picture of like a collection of your awards that you've won or you know, just say that, uh, hmm. as Justin likes to say, uh, LinkedIn is not the place to be humble, right? Hmm. Uh, the, the other thing I noticed with Trevin, sorry to pick on you, Trevin, but uh, you only have 250 uh, connections. So we're going to go over some techniques. In fact, I think that's one of the things that I might want to hit next is going over some techniques to really grow this network. Because when you grow the network, you're really going to be able to connect to other people. And specifically, you know, in, in, if you're doing uh, insurance and financial services, you want to make sure that, that you're connected to as many people as possible and putting out information that people would uh, want, that would be interested in. Yeah, right? Andres, I would just add, it's great. It's really important to get past the 500 uh, threshold on connections too, from an, uh, just from a pure optics standpoint. Um, you can see Misty has 500 plus. So once you hit once you hit over 500 in that section, that's all it's ever going to display. So by being at 501, 505 at the very least, you're you're presenting yourself uh, with the optics that you're a more networked person. And if somebody's getting their first impression just by looking at the top of their LinkedIn profile, that's why it's so important to have a great background photo and then also to show that you have around you know over 500 connections. Those are two ways of kind of uh, building instant social proof too. 
Exactly. Now, now, one thing I, I wanted to uh, go over with you, Misty, is, is this right here where you, on your headline, you have your name, and then it says uh, mm -hmm. marketing strategist slash event management. And uh, mm -hmm. those are two very separate and distinct things, right? So uh, yeah. what, what, what you want to do is you want like, and, and this goes for the picture that you choose, uh, on your banner, it goes for your headline, it goes for what you put in your, uh, in your summary. It all leads up to a story that you're telling that, that has to do with what your area of mastery is, what you want to be known for. So uh, if you're looking to, uh, to be more of a marketing strategist, then I would, I would focus on that. Um, if you notice over here, when you, you go to my profile, what I have here is I have Chief Mar Marketing Officer of Moby Trader. That's the company I work for. And I, I, I did have something else here, but I wanted to put that I'm a CMO of this company because it adds a little more weight to what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right here, I, after that, I have SEO, SEM Marketing Specialist. I put that for a very specific reason because I did some research and I found that SEO and SEM and marketing are the are like some of the chief things that people are looking for. So if you do a like every every year LinkedIn releases like the top jobs that recruiters are looking for, SEO and SEM is always in the top ten. So I made sure to put that there uh, for anybody who was interested in in what I do. And then I put public speaker because that's also actually a skill that a lot of people uh, you know like in their companies. And then founder of my company, Star Child Interactive. And then, of course, I've got the uh, 500 plus, even though I have close to 6,000 connections on LinkedIn. So, so, you know, what? going back to, uh, again, not to, to pick on you, uh, but I just wanted to show that, that you, because you are very, uh, you have a, a very good idea of what you do and what you're going for, you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're going for fits that mold right here because event management and marketing strategist are definitely two separate things. So you want to choose the one that you're most likely to be employed by and uh, make the most money with. And that's the thing that you kind of want to choose. Yeah. Just to add on that, I, I would just say, think of it like picking your outcome first. So you're, you're, you're designing your entire profile around, you know, what outcome do I most want to achieve? So if you're more connected, okay marketing strategist or you're more connected to the event manager, I would build around, uh, I would build around one of those. You can still feature the skill somewhere on the profile, but as far as like headline and as far as like the centricity of what your, what your primary focus is, I would kind of, um, kind of do what Andros is suggesting there and pick one and just focus on that direct outcome. So I hope that helps. So can I throw a question in or a wrench into the, the system? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, I don't know if anybody else on the call will relate, but um, some of what I'm, you know, I'm going back into the workforce after having owned a business uh, that I've spent a few years on. And it doesn't mean that the business will go away. Um, and some of my skills may not be, you know, um, I'm working on taking classes and things, but I think I'm a little scattered in my efforts as probably, you know, maybe other people will relate to, but um, you know, I'm looking for an opportunity and I think I get afraid to, to leave one out because what if that's the one, you know? And then um, I think that in terms of some of my more recent skills, they may not be up, you know, I, I don't want to deceive people and say I'm an SEO strategist, but I'm not. I mean, I have a working knowledge, but I'm not super strong at it. So I guess my question has to do, I, I get what you're saying about outcome, but I also want to live in the real world, which is there are not, a billion jobs so I want to keep myself as open to opportunities so how do I do that in that title uh, I just can't serve five masters but I'm trying <laughs> yeah that, that's a good question and, and and you know the answer that I always have for people uh, with that type of thing is is go for the thing that is going to uh, make you the most money so if, if you have a, uh, if, if your thing is to, uh, if you're looking to get a job in marketing, then, uh -huh. then be a marketer. And if you don't know how to do certain things, that's really okay. Because as, as we've mentioned in our, uh, in our 
previous call was that right here, if you don't know how to do something, well, you just open up good old LinkedIn learning and then you learn how to do it. And uh, okay. so the answer is always yes. In fact, uh, this brings me to an interesting, um, uh, an interesting story that I, uh, I, I love about Richard Branson. And one of the ways that he started Virgin Airlines is that he was on a trip and uh, there was a horrible storm. This was in the Bahamas and there was a horrible storm and all of the airlines were basically shut down and people were stranded. And uh, they were dying to get off the island. And uh, instead of just waiting around, he saw an opportunity. So what he did was he found a, a charter jet and hired it. And he didn't even have the money for it. But what he did was he went back to the airport and he sold tickets off the island at a premium rate. And he sold out that, that, uh, that plane, made a pretty handsome profit on top of it, and realized that he could go into business doing this type of thing. And that's how he started Virgin Airlines. So he, he knew nothing about the airline industry and he knew nothing about, uh, you know, anything except he saw an opportunity and he, he just created it. So I, I think that uh, if you specifically are looking to do something that has to do with marketing, because I think that you, you know, obviously you, you know a lot about marketing, uh, you just need to boost up your skills just a little bit. You can do that on LinkedIn Learning. And the answer is always yes. Um, now, one of the things I'm going to show you here, I'm going to go back to... Um, uh, and, and we get into this when we do job seeking on uh, with LinkedIn. But uh, and, and for those of you who can't see the screen right now, please go back and take a look at the replay of this uh, so I can show you exactly what this is. And, uh, you know, we're uh, 21 minutes into the conversation. So just fast forward 21 minutes uh, when you see the replay, and you can get to this point. So anyway, let's say that I'm going to search for a marketing job, right? And I want to do, so I'm looking up marketing in the search engine right now, and I'm going to go uh, look up jobs. Uh, and uh, I have the premium version of LinkedIn, so it gives me these extra little uh, added bonuses. And I'm going to search worldwide. So let's say that hypothetically, um, I was going to go look for a job uh, in, um, let's see, I want to go to uh, get a job in um, uh, Thailand or let's say uh, Vietnam, right? So I'm going to look for a marketing job in Vietnam. Here's all of the companies that are hiring right now. In fact, if I wanted to get a job at the Walt Disney Company, uh, I could go ahead and do that. Uh, and apply there in Ho Chi Minh City. That would be kind of a wild departure, right? But I could definitely do that if I wanted to. Uh, I'm in the top 25 among the applicants. And LinkedIn Premium lets me know that. Over here, there's a, the Walt Disney Studios in Vietnam, the top 10 uh, applicants. So I'm going to click on that because that looks like an actual job that I could do. And uh, I could apply right within LinkedIn here. Then I'm going to scroll down, and what you're going to see here is you're going to see some uh, data that will come back to you about the types of skills that they're looking for within this particular job. So uh, I see that there's marketing, marketing strategy, management, leadership, uh, a few other things, and they're also looking for teamwork, strategic planning, and negotiation. Now, where they get these particular skill sets from is going to be uh, back over here. Let me go back to my profile. And um, let's see here. So I'm going to go back over to my profile. And this is going to be in your skills and um, uh, endorsements section of your profile. So as I scroll down, you're going to see that these are my skills right here, my featured skills and endorsements. And all of these things right here, I have put here. So if I wanted to put uh, right here, because I noticed that negotiation is something that they're looking for, I could go back over here to my skills and endorsements and I could add negotiation. And guess what? All of a sudden, I now have eight of the 10 skills that they're looking for, right? So just, it'll, it'll boost your, your, uh, your standing just a little bit. Now, the, the, where this falls into line 
with, uh, with the recruiters is more and more recruiters are using LinkedIn as a way to, uh, to find candidates. And so if you're a premium member of LinkedIn and you're in the top 10 candidates, that means that every day when the uh, recruiter is looking for that particular job uh, applicant, then they're going to, you're, you're going to be at the top of that list. So you're going to come first. Now, as an added thing that I would always do is I would look for, I would go to the marketing uh, Walt Disney Studios in Ho Chi Minh, and I would go to that particular, um, uh, that particular office, and I would look for in LinkedIn who the hiring manager is. And once I see who the hiring manager is, I would send them, an, I would connect with them on LinkedIn and send them a little message saying, hey, I just saw this application. I think I'd be... Uh, I'd be really good at this. Is there a way that we can set up a conversation? And if you're an HR person and you're going through applicant after applicant and one applicant comes up and get, has the initiative to actually say, oh, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this job, you know that they're going to, they don't want to keep looking for somebody. They're going to want somebody with initiative. So this is a good way of finding a job. Now, this is a very long-winded answer for you, Misty. Uh, so I apologize, but basically what, what we're doing is we're, we're kind of gaming the system just a little bit to, to find you the ideal job that is going to be perfect for you. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the way that, that that's going to work is by looking to see what it is you can actually do. Now I'm going to go back over here to uh, Glassdoor, right? And uh, Glassdoor is, uh, we mentioned this before, but Glassdoor is a, is a job listing board that basically aggregates all the jobs that, you, that, that are available, essentially. And it aggregates it into this one little website. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for uh, marketing. If you go to, uh, if you can't see what I'm doing, but you'll be able to see this in the replay. Uh, you go to marketing uh, on uh, Glassdoor. And then I'm going to look for marketing jobs in Palo Alto, just because that's where all the good jobs are, like the really high paying ones. And uh, I'm going to spell marketing correctly even. And you still spell it wrong. You still spell it wrong. Spell corrector. Oh, geez, Louise. <laughs> don't ever trust my spelling anybody. Okay, marketing manager in Palo Alto. And when I search for that on glassdoor.com, what happens is, uh, that, uh, nothing shows up, but, uh, I've got a small issue. I don't know what happened. Um, there it is. So all of these jobs are showing up for all of these great companies. Like, um, here's Intuit, which is, you know, they make all the, the tax software. Here's, uh, you know, some video game companies. Uh, there's, uh, there's all these companies that are looking, here's a product manager for Amazon. So if I click on those particular jobs and I start looking at what the requirements are for those jobs, I'm just going to start a mental checklist of what I know I can do, right? So it starts to give me an idea of what is going to be, uh, what, what, what I'm capable of, what the, the type of job that I can actually do. And it, it's a real confidence booster too, because uh, even if you don't have a degree, even if you like feel like you're lacking in some skills, if you read some of the job description and you go, oh, I could actually do nine out of 10 of those things. And the 10th thing I could learn on LinkedIn learning, well, that's great, right? So then what you want to do is you want to grab the, the, uh, the, the, basically the, the bullet points of what they're looking for. And then you're going to go over here to your, uh, to your summary and you're going to add that to your summary. And, and so you're basically borrowing other people's stuff. So to answer your question, Misty, about like, you know, following many masters, you, you, mm. especially in your position, what you want to do is you want to like think about what your ideal job is. Go find the ideal job on Glassdoor, like in, in any area in the world, find that job and then create your profile to match that job. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh-huh. And, 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 and I, specific. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I understand the idea of like not wanting to miss any opportunities, but it's kind of like, mm -hmm. imagine if you're growing a garden and, uh, with that garden, you are planting seeds, you have a bunch of seeds and you go, you know what? I have a big open field. I'm going to plant these seeds all over this field because I want, I want the, the plants to have lots of room to grow. Right. And what will actually happen is the garden will not 
come to fruition because the little tiny seeds will get plucked out before they come to fruition where if they're all in one general area in your garden and you can tend it, then you can put a lot more energy into that one section. Or, you know, it's like dating. If you're dating a whole lot of people simultaneously, you can't form one relationship. And uh, in this case, mm-hmm. the relationship is with yourself. So um, does that Love make sense? Love the Andros. Yeah. Love the metaphors. Thank you. Um, I'm full of them. I just want to add one thing. <laughs> When Andres went through glass door there and he was showing where the skills were, the, the nice thing about that is they're basically telling you exactly what they're looking for. So what we're doing is we're simply reverse engineering the exact skills that they're looking for. And we're, I mean, we're being in alignment. We're not trying to be dishonest. Uh, as long as you are qualified, we want to put those on your profile and we want to, we want to set you up for the best opportunity to get that job. If that's, if that's your ultimate outcome is to find, is to find an ideal job. In that case, we're just reverse engineering it, and we are um, we're we're doing. They're telling us what they want, so now we're presenting ourselves the way that they're looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So as the, as the saying goes, um, you know, resume is French for bullshit. So you know, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> go for it, and uh, you know, don't don't worry about it because worst case scenario is that, uh, you know, you get the job and then you go, oh, I'm just not as, like, you're going to have to train me a little bit on this one thing. Because uh, you're never going to get a job. Like, you're not going to go out for a programmer if you don't know how to program. But if, if you're looking for a marketing job or you're looking to uh, connect with people who have similar traits as you, uh, then, then that's going to be, you know, what you're, that, that's going to be how you're going to want to leverage yourself. And, of course, like, once your profile is kind of, uh, set to a place where you're happy with it and it, it feels like you go, okay, I can, I can stand behind a lot of these things that I do. Uh, then you start doing the outreach to other people. Now um, with, uh, with someone like, uh, like Trevin, who I know is going to want to be looking for business and make money on LinkedIn, this also helps because when somebody wants to do business with you, um, if you're even owner what they're going to be looking for is what your state of mastery is and I've spent a long time on my LinkedIn profile so if somebody lands there I want them to spend a long time reading and the more they read the more they go oh my god this guy has a lot of experience right so so that's what you want ultimately is you want to fill up your experience in such a way that that it's a very long read and no one's going to read all of it but the more you put there the more it's going to be relevant to uh, somebody search or how they, you know, the first impression that they have on you. Cause let's not forget that if someone's going to do business with you, even if it's, even if you're a business owner, they're going to, they're going to Google your name. Right. And so the first mm-hmm. thing that they, that's going to pop up mostly is your LinkedIn profile. So, so you want to make sure you have some cat issues there, Justin. All right. Yeah. My, my cat just knocked over my microphone. That was <laughs> <laughs> battling for airtime. Uh, so we're live here, folks. Uh, so, so the, 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 the idea here is to really make that first impression that if somebody first, they'll go to your LinkedIn profile before anything, you want to make sure that it's completely dialed in. Now for, for you, uh, Misty and for Trevin, I noticed that both of you have, uh, your, uh, right here, your summary is not completely filled in. So you really want to fill that in with, uh, with a description that summarizes your state of mastery, like what you do. And uh, you can put up to 2,000 characters here. So use every single one because it is search engine optimized. Yeah. Yeah, you can and you should use all 2,000 characters. Um, we want to, in fact, I mean, in every single section of the profile, your summary and even your job descriptions, your job descriptions also can have up to 2,000 characters. Uh, we would encourage you and highly recommend that you actually fill out them in their entirety because, as Andre says, everything in here is going to be, um, it's going to be indexed and available in the, uh, in the search. So if you want to rank for certain keywords, you're going to want those keywords to show up uh, as many times as possible because they're going to look at frequency. Um, They're going to look at natural languaging. So make sure that if you're in your profile, if there's a keyword you want to be known for, you're not just saying, you know, uh, my name is, uh, my name is Misty Barnes. I'm a marketer, uh, marketer, 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 marketer. You can't, you can't do something like that. But if you just keep it naturally (laughs) languaged, you're like, 
I'm a marketer. I've worked in the marketing industry for X years. Uh, here are some of the marketing projects I've worked on, and you're kind of naturally languaging, but you're overusing the term. That's okay. So okay. Think of it in terms of like natural languaging, but you are kind of forcing the word a few extra times. So it's not it's not quite natural, uh, but it's natural for uh, computer and SEO purposes. <laughs> So, okay. you, you know, and, and part of this is, is also like, think about like, if you were to wave a wand and your job was able to be anything that you wanted to be on the highest level, right? What would that look like? So for instance, uh, like for, for you, Misty, I think that, that, you know, I could see you really getting your face out there and selling products and maybe working in trade shows. So, you know, public speaking is going to be like an important thing that you'll want to highlight. And so you'll want to go back in, in the past of your previous work experience. And, and even if it, if it doesn't seem relevant to what you do now, if there was any public speaking involved, you want to mention that. If there was any sales involved, you want to mention that. You know, part of the thing with, with how we do business nowadays, whether it's working, looking for a job or uh, having a, uh, you know, doing business to business type stuff, is that people really want to see like that your skill set is diversified. And uh, the more diversified it is, and the more that you have a state of mastery in, in those particular areas, with a focus on one particular niche, the more well-rounded uh, you will appear to be. So Andres, that, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's pause for a second here, and let's ask if there's any questions. And then I'm thinking for the second half of the call that we switch to kind of link open networkers and, and building the network. Uh, but for now, are there any questions about what uh, Andres has just covered here? Um, is there anything we can answer right off the bat here? Don't, don't everybody speak at once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rick, are you, you, you've been kind of quiet. Is there, do you have any questions about, um, uh, about your profile or, or anything that you've run into at all? <laughs> No, I mean, I, you know, I took your advice and, um, and did the, the, uh, you know, I've used all 50 of the, uh, of the skill sets. Awesome. Now, let me ask you a question. When you, when you apply to a job and say there's one I don't have, but I have 50 already, do I just eliminate one and put it in there or yeah, is exactly. nine out of 10 good enough? Uh, I, I would, well, nine out of 10 is good enough, but I would, I would prune it anyway. And this is a really good, you brought up, bring up a really good point, which is, uh, I like to go through and prune things that are no longer relevant. Like for instance, uh, for a while I had like, uh, that I know HTML, you know what? It's not really relevant to what I do. I know it, but it's not like I'm going to be looking for an HTML coding job or anything like that. Uh, so I don't really need that. I, 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 I took it out and put it, put something else in place that was a bit more relevant to the job market. Uh, same thing with, uh, I went to, um, I had like Google API, which I know, but I'm never going to really use it for what I do. So, and no, people aren't looking for people with Google API experience. I mean, if they are, I can mention it in a job interview, but I'm not looking for that type of thing. So I removed that and put like digital marketing, which is more, what I do. So, um, yeah, I would, I would go over there and prune it. And that the, the second part of, of your point, which I think is a good one is that if you start looking for work on LinkedIn and you notice that there's a pattern that the jobs that you're going for have a certain thing that people are looking for, then get rid of the, anything that just you feel you could lose and yeah, replace it because you want to, you want to stack the deck, uh, to your favor as much as possible. And Andres, I would just add real quick, um, like for Andres' example there with like HTML, for instance, you could prune that out of your skill set, but you could put a sentence in your summary or a sentence in your prior job experience that still mentions it. Uh, but your, your skills should really focus on what the job, what, if you're applying to a job, you want to make sure that you're hitting all the points that they're looking for uh, specifically. But if you need to take one of those skills out, just move it into your summary or move it into your um, description. So it still shows up in your profile somewhere but it's not in those featured skills because your featured skills are, are then just matching the, what's most important to that company. Okay, great. Cool. That's great. So yeah, um, uh, Justin, you want to take this part and uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit and uh, talk about, um, uh, yeah, we're going to talk, talk, we're, we're talk about how to build your uh, LinkedIn oh. network quickly yeah. and, why, and why that can be important um, is another, is another key aspect. So let me, um, let 
let me bring up my LinkedIn here. Yeah, so, so for those of you who uh, cannot see the screen right now, uh, Justin has brought up his network. Oh, man, we're, we're always neck and neck with one another. He's got 1,500 more connections than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so LinkedIn, uh, so as far as, as LinkedIn is concerned, you have your free account, you have your paid accounts, and the, the main paid accounts that we're dealing with in this course are going to be either the job seeker, if you're looking to get hired for an ideal job, or the uh, sales navigator, which is more of a business owner account. And that's for generating leads, uh, finding ideal prospects, ideal clients. Uh, I run the Sales Navigator account. Andres runs the, the Job Seeker account right now. So we, we both kind of do that so that we have uh, access to be able to do uh, teaching tutorials also on each level. And just so you know, you do get a free month of either one of those. So, uh, you know, when you, you know, if, if you don't have it now, then get it. But wait until your LinkedIn profile is really dialed in. And everybody on this call gets a free, uh, you know, review of your LinkedIn profile. So once you, you know, your home assignments for all of you is going to be, uh, you know, to, to, to get your LinkedIn profile really dialed in and then uh, we'll go over it and uh, show you how to maximize it. That's right. Great. So, so let me just tell you a few of the limitations with the free account. Uh, and this is why if you, if you run a free account and you go into the search and you're looking to either connect with uh, hiring managers or you're looking to connect with ideal prospects, ideal clients, or people working for a certain industry, your search capabilities are actually limited to only people that are in your first degree or second degree network. And you can actually, and then you can only see a few people that are outside of your second degree network and then your third degree network. Um, to backtrack there, um, a first degree network just to define it, a first degree network connection is somebody that you've actually connected to and they've accepted your connection request. So that makes up your first degree connections. Uh, a second degree is simply uh, you've connected to somebody and that other person knows somebody that you're connected to, but you're not directly connected. So that means that they're in your second degree network. And then a third degree network would just be, you know, somebody who knows somebody um, that you're connected to. So that's just kind of to tell you how the degrees of separation work on LinkedIn. Uh, any questions about that real fast? Is that, is that clear? Yep. So, so basically what it does is when you pay for LinkedIn, it brings the degrees of connections just slightly closer to you. So you don't have to like... If you pay for LinkedIn, you basically have full access to, to seeing all the profiles on LinkedIn without having to kind of build a solid foundation of, uh, of connections. So if you have a paid account, it's less important that you have a gigantic um, that you have a gigantic frame of, uh, of of your network because you can you can then find people you can basically find anyone you want to find at any time as long as you're paying LinkedIn because they're that's one of the rewards of paying them is you're getting access to the full database basically. Now, if you have a free account, you're limited though, so it's really important that you build out your um, your network foundation so that you're able to search certain industries, certain people, because otherwise you're not even going to be able to find them because they're not, they're going to basically their profiles are invisible. So one of the one of the tricks, and this is this is good for both, but um, it's it's very important if you have a free account, is searching for these group of people that are called LinkedIn Open Networkers. And they, um, they show up on there, they usually use the acronym L-I-O-N, like LION. And that, again, that stands for LinkedIn Open Networker. And what these people do is they are people that are on LinkedIn kind of with like the sole purpose of building massive networks of, uh, networks of connections. So they, they put that on their profile so that everyone knows that if you, if you send a connection request to them, they're automatically gonna accept it no matter what. And their, their purpose is to have these giant spheres of influence, essentially. Um, but the beauty of that is if I connect to one person that has 25,000 connections, that means that, I, that that one person moves into my first degree network and all 24,999 of their connections move instantly into my second degree network. So it's kind of a trick of bringing in, um, of, of expanding your sphere of influence really, really fast. Um, and to, to do that, all you have to do is when you go, if you're in your LinkedIn profile on the top left, you're going to see a search bar. Um, all you need to do is go up to that search bar and just kind of type in L period, I period, O period, N period. 
um, you could even just type in without the periods and it'll probably come up. Um, you type that in the search bar and then it's going to give you a filter where you can filter by all people, jobs, content, companies, etc. You're going to filter by people because we want to connect with uh, individual profiles. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to um, I'm going to add some other filters. And if you if you're watching this on the replay, you'll actually see me doing it. Uh, we're at about it, let's see here. We're at, how far are we on the call? We're about 45 minutes in. 44 right minutes. We got about 10 minutes left in the call. Yeah. So if you if you're fast forwarding, just write that right in your notes. Maybe uh, check about 40 44 minutes if you want to see this done. Uh, but you're going to you. I, I filter by second or third degree connections because I'm only looking to add new people that I haven't already connected to. And in this case, I've um, I've sent I've sent a bunch of invites just recently, so that a lot of these already say invite sent. But you could just go down. You'd go down the the, the line here, and you're going to um, you're going to look at all the available people here, and you're going to send them. Uh, you're going to send the people that have the LinkedIn Open Networker designation. Um, you're going to send them requests to connect. Like here's an example um, of somebody right here. He is. Well, he's got the acronym L I O N. And actually, let me pull up a different one. Here's one. The guy right below him had. Um, here's a better example. This guy has. This guy's a LinkedIn open networker. He has 4,000 plus connections. Um, so we know that by if I connect with him, I'm instantly going to bring in those 3,999 or, or however many he has into my second degree network. Um, and we have we have a, a baseline of exactly uh, how connected he is and why that's going to help me expand my search abilities. So so next week when we when we uh, when we do our um, our call, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to reach out to these people not only uh, once they're in your second degree network, but how to start to really. Uh, do a finite search of, of who the ideal prospects were going to be, especially if you're prospecting for a job or prospecting for, uh, for like clients, um, then, then this is going to be really important because part of it is whether or not you have the uh, LinkedIn sales navigator or the LinkedIn job seeker, uh, when you pay them, them the money, you're only allowed to connect to 10 to 15 people outside of your first and second degree network, right? So you, 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 you're limited on how many people you can actually connect with. But if your network is huge and you have 6,000, 7,000 people, then it changes the game because then you don't have to use those uh, connections uh, to, you know, those, those, uh, the, those credits essentially, uh, which is called the in-mail uh, system that they have. Um, and this will make a lot more sense when you're actually looking at it. The main thing with, with all of this, though, is that if you're connecting with somebody, it also helps that if you have a large network that you can say, hey, I'm connected to this other person uh, that you know that's in your network. Would you mind adding me? And uh, it gives you a bit more credence as well. Yeah. There's, there's a few more uses we'll go through, but our, our goal, I mean, for you guys is not, to, is not necessarily to build 7,000 connections. Uh, our goal for you guys is to expand your reach so that if you wanted to connect with employees at like Google, uh, because you connected with a few of these lions, all of a sudden you're going to have one or two people that work at Google that you've now connected to in your second degree network. Um, and then you can start connecting. If you do a search for like the company Google, now you can connect with those people that are in your second degree network. And as you connect with one of them, um, that'll open the the door to other Google employees, and then you can start connecting with the with the company until you get to the person that you want. So there's a uh, it's kind of like, what's the fastest way for me to connect to the person I want? And and this is this is the best strategy if you're running a free account. I mean, again, if you're running a paid account, I can just search for that person directly, um, and I can find the hiring manager at Google just by uh, by a search. Um, but if I'm if I'm running if I'm running the free account, I have to kind of get creative, and I have to I have to do some of these uh, tactics to kind of be able to find that person, and then to be able to send a connection request to that person, uh, because I also cannot send a connection request to anyone outside of my second degree network. So that's another thing uh, on the free account. Does all this uh, Does anybody have any questions about any of this stuff? Does this all make sense? I know it's harder because you can't see the screen, but. Um, yeah. the, the, to, to, just to sum up, it's like you, you really want to make an active effort to connect with people. 
And one of the other things that, in fact, we have a, a module in the, in the course that you should have access to uh, for a program called Duck Soup. We'll go over that uh, in another call. But Duck Soup is both of our secret weapon that allows us to really connect to as many people as possible in a short amount of time, uh, to the point where it can be overwhelming how many people you can connect to almost instantly. So it sounds like you are both saying it's definitely worth the investment to be a premium member. Yes, absolutely. In fact, it's, okay. that, it's, a, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was always of the mindset that I would never, ever, ever pay for LinkedIn uh, premium. There was no point in it. And for a long time, that was true. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as Microsoft bought it and they started doing all of these new upgrades, uh, then all of a sudden I realized how, like, I will always pay for it. Um, it's going, it's a, it's an important part of, of like how I operate. Uh, more and more people are coming to it. And, uh, but save the, save the money until you get your LinkedIn profile really dialed in, have us go over it. Cause you guys are paying for it, have us go over it. And then what we'll do is, uh, uh, we're, we'll have you switch on the machine as it will. And, uh, we'll teach you how to use this, uh, this plugin called duck soup and we'll, uh, we'll show you how to really rock it. And, uh, I've used this technique to, to land gigs that I just, in fact, uh, let's, uh, let me share my screen real quick. And while you're doing uh, that, just, so, so the, uh, the job seeker account, Andres, what is it right now? Twenty nine ninety nine a month. If you pay yeah, $29.99. And I think it's a little bit cheaper if you pay for the year up front. Um, but the sales navigator is about $85 a month. If you pay month to month and about 70, if you pay the year up front. So if you pay 12 months, it'd be, it would average out to 70 a month. If you pay the whole year up front. So you do, you definitely do want to make sure that you're dialed in and you're ready to take action once you start uh, throwing down money on, on the paid accounts. So, uh, so I, as much mm -hmm. as I encourage you to have the paid account, I also encourage you to kind of um, have all your ducks in a row uh, so that you, you're ready, uh, that you're ready for it so that you're not just kind of throwing mm -hmm. your money away. And, and so okay. I, yeah. And I'm going to give you guys a perfect example. Justin, do you mind releasing your screen real quick yeah, so I can share mine? There you All right, go. great. So I'm I'm going to share my screen. You guys can you'll be able to see this on uh, uh, on the replay. Um, but basically, um, uh, one of the jobs that I had, uh, in fact, this is kind of an interesting story. So this just happened. So this is going to give you an exact story of of uh, what uh, what I'm talking about. This guy right here. I'm going to show you this thread, Gavin Hammer. Gavin Hammer is a guy who, uh, he is the CEO of a company called Sendable, which uh, manages social media marketing. In fact, uh, I'm going to go over here, and it looks like a really cool product, uh, and uh, I was excited to see it. I really liked what, uh, what he was doing. And so um, here's, his, here's the company right here. And basically it manages social media, kind of like Hootsuite, but it seems to have a lot of really cool features. So anyway, I reached out to him and I used an automation system we're gonna show you called DuckSoup. And I wrote this email that just says, hi Gavin, I moved to the EU from the US. I find myself doing more business in the UK. So what I did was I searched for all the CEOs in the UK only. And, uh, and I automated this note to send out to all the CEOs in the UK. And basically it put his name in and put in his company, Sendable, and it says, I find myself doing more business in the UK. We have some connections in common, and I would love to learn more about Sendable and what your part of the big blueprint is. Would you mind adding me to your LinkedIn network? And he immediately got back mm -hmm. to me, and he said, uh, what are you doing in the UK? And I gave him a little bit of my background, and he said, I'm currently looking for the head of marketing for my company. Are you looking for a wow. new role? I actually saw my TED Talk, because I have... Uh, <laughs> TED talk up there, and I would love to chat. Are you in London? So we're going to have a, a conversation. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but the fact that I have a CEO of a pretty major company calling me up, uh, like reaching out to me and saying, "Hey, uh, we're looking for a head of marketing. Uh, are you available?" That's that's a big deal. And so the, the mm -hmm. point is, is that especially if you have certain skills that you can kind of compile and get together into a uh, storyline like we were talking about, uh, then what that's going to do is it's going to give you 
the ability to really uh, look for opportunities where there were none previously. And I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to end here, but I, I think that the biggest issue that people have with all of this and, and uh, let me see, you're not alone in this, is that, is that I, I think that people don't give themselves enough credit for what they know, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, we're all just trying to make it in this world and, and it doesn't, like we all, we all have the capacity to learn and to acquire new skills. And so if you find a job that looks perfect, but you have like seven out of the 10 skills, you can learn the last three. I mean, that's not going to be an mm. issue and you can think your way through the rest of it, uh, you know? Um, so, yeah. so definitely give yourself a lot more credit. And part of that is, is making your uh, LinkedIn profile the thing that you stand behind, what you stand, like that's where you stand your ground and you go, this is what I am. I am this. And it's a culmination of all the things that you, you know, your state of mastery, if you will. One more point there, Andres. Uh, I just want to bring this up because you kind of glossed over it, but it, it's so critical is that Andros has a link to his TEDx talk in his LinkedIn profile. So that might, mm -hmm. I mean, that's likely the difference between this guy, like all of a sudden thinking of him in terms of like a marketing, you know, uh, a chief of marketing officer job uh, or not. So like, if that's why I would say, don't be humble. You know, he didn't have to link his TEDx talk to his LinkedIn profile, but that's a huge prestige builder. So if you have a talk that you've given a keynote or something like that, and you can put that on there and you're, you're able to, to be vulnerable enough to share that with everybody, um, that can be the difference that makes the difference. And um, so I, I think, you know, it, that is one of the, the critical components there is to take advantage of that section, which is under your summary um, called rich media, where you can actually add links to uh, videos, add links to um, projects, things that you've done. Um, because mm -hmm. in this case, that was probably one of the, I mean, you know, Andres is a brilliant guy, but that was one of the things that kind of probably separated him from other people that were reaching out to that same, uh, that same guy. Yeah. And so and I have I, a question. I have yeah. a, oh, I'm sorry. Can I just ask a quick question about that? Sure. Uh, Cause I don't know if everybody on the phone has a, a Ted talk. Um, <laughs> mine's not really, uh, yeah, I haven't had one yet. So, um, so a thought on that, because I know videos are really important. Um, do you recommend, so what do you, what do you do if you don't have a TED talk? Well, what do you uh, that's, that's a great question. And we, we actually have a module that talks about this, but, uh, and we'll talk okay. about this in another conversation because we've got to wrap this up, but I'll, I'll okay. just show you something that you can do again. Uh, we're at the tail end. So if you go to the end uh, of the replay, you can see this. Well, you, we um, pull quick, quick points. I mean, it's, it's all about building prestige, right? So if you have, uh, yep. that's where we come in with like awards that you've won. That's where we come in with, uh, if you've done other keynotes, maybe you haven't done a TED talk, but you've done a keynote and you filmed it. Like one of the things that I encourage uh, my clients to do is to film every single talk that they do so that they have a record of it and they can, uh, they can use that as uh, media. Now it won't be, it won't have the production value of a TED talk, but it's still you in front of a group of people. Um, Andres and I did a talk at the Ventura Chamber back in April, and I, I used that video to help leverage me into a, a speaking gig through the Association of IT Professionals. Um, so that was, they looked at that and they're like, okay, you're good enough to come to the talk. So, I mean, it, it, it doesn't have to be like quality, and we filmed that off of our, off of a cell phone. Right. So, and, uh, and you just, you just have to know a little bit more than the person who doesn't know. Right. Uh, and that's all there is. So I, I, I've gone into LinkedIn and if on the top right hand corner, there's a little uh, checkerboard thing. And if you click on that, you're going to see a button called SlideShare. And basically SlideShare is a PowerPoint presentation platform for the internet. Right. So you can make a PowerPoint mm -hmm. presentation. Uh, so for you, uh, Misty, I would do a PowerPoint presentation that was something like, uh, you know, 10 things about advertising on social media that you probably don't know. Right. Okay. Or 10 tips mm -hmm. to advertise on social media. I know that if I if I plop down five thousand dollars and I said, you have one hour to give me this presentation, you would build this thing for me. Right. And you would oh, probably yeah. do a good <laughs> job. Right. So create yeah. something like yeah. that. And then you put it on your LinkedIn okay. profile and uh, okay. then, then all of a sudden you have something that no one else has. Okay. So Got any it. other questions uh, from anybody? No. And hi, Marla. Okay. I see we're on the call at the end here. <laughs> so, all right. So, so everyone has a homework assignment. Okay. And the homework assignment okay. is for our next, for our next meeting is 
uh, fill out your LinkedIn profile as much as possible. Uh, th- go to, go to gla- glassdoor.com, really look at your ideal job, and then create all of your, you know, all of your previous empl- employment situations, even if it was working at a hot dog stand. It has something to do with what you're doing now. So really highlight what you do. Get, 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 the, get the information Put it right here in your summary. Put it right here in your like your, your previous job experiences. Fill it out as much as possible to the max. Volunteer work, everything, uh, and then uh, you know let us know. Ping us when you do that. We'll have another call, and then we'll start going over each of your individual LinkedIn profiles one by one. And uh, you know we'll we'll start really shaping this thing up, and then we'll get to the next part, which is getting clients and finding that job. So any other questions that you have, by all means, you have our contact information, you can contact us. Anything you wanna uh, discuss before we go? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's, that's good for, for this call. Uh, I was just pointing out, uh, so Marla, welcome to the call. I know you came in like about 45, uh, about uh, 9 or 9.45 or so. It, was there anything you wanted to, to say real fast here before we get off? No, I'll listen to the replay and uh, awesome. go from there. Okay, okay I'll, I'll make sure you get that. Thank uh, you. It'll, it'll be in the members area. We'll have that. I'll, I'll have that up. I think today, actually. So. Yeah, and Thanks so much. And, so, um, and let us know how you know if if you're getting something out of this. If something's not clear, if you don't like what we're doing or whatever, we we really want to hear feedback from you because we're about to really uh, we're we're rebuilding this constantly. Uh, for instance, Microsoft just released a um, uh, a new version of Word that connects directly into LinkedIn. So as you do your resume, you can connect it directly to LinkedIn. We're going to do something on that. As more uh, uh, Microsoft products start being integrated into LinkedIn, we're going to build stuff around that. So uh, if there's anything that or any questions that you have, please contact us. That's that's why you're here. That's what you paid for. And if you're we on the call sure right that- now. I just put in the chat. I put a, a um, my email address and Andres's email address in the chat there. <clears throat> so if you need to verify that, and I'll, I'll just read them out loud in case I don't think you're going to see that on the replay. But my email address is j at coachingbiz, B-I-Z, like zebra, mastery.com. So that's just the letter J at coachingbizmastery.com. Andros is simply andros at starchild.us. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and if you can't make one of these calls, email us in advance, and we can, uh, we can kind of take that question on the call, and then you can watch the replay later on too. So uh, yeah. keep that in mind. So, all right, everybody. Well, thank you for coming in. And uh, so do your homework next week. (laughs) We're going to go over everybody's uh, LinkedIn profiles. And then we're going to build from that to the next part, which is making connections, finding good clients, getting a killer job. Uh, So uh, thank you, everybody. We really appreciate your your joining us this evening. So from the Netherlands. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.